AI can now read entire scripts. There's a brand new AI video generation tool that is completely free. And Jared Leto has an AI project that you're going to want to check out. This is your AI film news of the week. I'd like to thank everybody who made it out to the T2 event out in Hollywood. It was really incredible to see an AI feature film with a packed audience. The artists did an amazing job on the project. I think it's a really interesting prototype for what the future of collaborative storytelling can be. So a big shout out to Nim Perez and Sway Molina for putting that project out. There's a link below this video to a premiere where you can check out the film online. Nicholas Newbert, who creates some of the best AI projects in the world, has been collaborating with Jared Leto on a music project for 30 Seconds to Mars. And it's kind of like a motion picture AI music video slash VFX project. And the visuals look really incredible. He used Runway for the project. And I think it really does showcase some of the better cinematic shots that we've seen from Runway up to this point. There's also a brand new AI video generation tool that you should know about. It's called Hyper, and it basically allows you to create two seconds of AI video completely for free. I want to showcase it to you because some of the generations that we're seeing from the tool are really impressive. While it's still limited to two seconds, the results are actually pretty awesome. So we can take a look at some of the examples here, like we have this globe that's kind of spinning in this fantasy world. These two people kissing here, and there's kind of like emotion in their face. Looks very cool. This uh, little girl riding a velociraptor. Okay, pretty cool. So as you can see, some of the results from this tool are generating some of the better examples of AI footage up to this point. Now, of course, you are limited to two seconds at this time, but they are introducing four seconds very soon. Now, I want to show you how to use this tool. It's actually very easy. All you have to do is go to create video with text and you just type in the text that you want to see. For our example, I'll say a man holding a magical artifact with a blue glow and all you have to do is click create. So this is the result that we got from Hyper and this is incredible that we just typed in text and we have this VFX shot. You know, it's kind of floating, it moves around, has these like orbs that are moving around it. And one of the better examples of AI video directly from text to video that I've seen up to this point. Now, of course, I wanted to compare this to some of the other tools like Runway and Pika, and I went ahead and did that. So this is our result from Pika Labs. And again, this one was pretty good. I wouldn't say that it's hyper photorealistic. It kind of comes across more like an Unreal Engine video game cinematic, and it has that glowing magical energy coming off the artifact, so it does look pretty good. And this is the result from Runway. Not a lot of movement. It does have some interesting kind of morphing in the artifact in the middle, but it really is coming across more as a stock photo that has some visual effects elements over it, and his hand looks like he just got in a horrible lawn mowing accident. So. Uh, not the best result that we're getting from Runway. Now I should note that Hyper also allows you to upload an image and create your video, which I think is a much more interesting way of going about creatively directing your specific projects. I wanna show you how it's done. All you have to do is go to animate your image and then you upload your image. We have this image here of this guy holding this magical artifact. It was generated inside of Midjourney. That's why it looks so dang good. And we will go ahead and drag and drop it into our scene here. And again, we're going to say a man holding a magical artifact with a blue glow and click create. So let's take a look at our result here. This is what we got from Hyper and it does look pretty good. I mean, the parallaxing looks fairly realistic, but there's not a lot of movement in the overall image. And then some of the like energetic areas kind of near the orb, they're static, but it doesn't really make sense. So not the best results in this specific instance. And of course, I wanna compare that to Pika and Runway as well. So here's the result from Pika Labs. The guy just is like talking for some reason, but the energy inside of the magical artifact looks pretty good. We even have a little bit of like lens flaring going on in the side, so not a bad result. And here's the result that we have inside of Runway. So I would say his movements seem a little more realistic 
but the uh, the way the light is hitting his face and it's like making his eyes glow kind of makes it look like it's possessing him or something like that uh, is not the most realistic. So again, in many instances, what I would recommend doing is re-rolling this multiple times to get the overall result that you are looking for. In our opinion, Runway is the best image to video platform out there at the moment. So I actually wanted to run some experiments because I saw some really interesting examples of visual effects over on the Hyper website. And so I was curious if we did image to video what some of the VFX examples would be like from the tool. So I have this image of this house on fire and I'm really curious what would it be like if we animated it in some of the different tools. So this is the result that we got from Hyper. It's pretty good. I mean, there is a, a bit of jitteriness, but the physics seem to make sense uh, in these early days of AI VFX. This is the result that we got from Runway. You can see that there are some interesting parts, especially where the clouds are billowing. But for the most part, I would say that this isn't very realistic uh, at a macro scale. And then we have this result from Pika Labs. And I would say that the physics, generally speaking, are not that great at this point. So it does seem like the underlying architecture inside of Hyper is going to be a better example of where we can get with AI VFX in the future. And to take it one step further, I took the Hyper video and I imported it into Topaz video here. And all I did is I went over here to the frame interpolation, turned that on, and you can actually slow it down to extend it if you want to. You don't have to, but it can give you a little bit more time than that two second limitation. And I set it to the Apollo model, which is uh, the, the model that will be used to interpolate between frames. It's the best one, I've tested them all. And then our sensitivity is set to 10. And the cool thing about using Topaz video is you actually can go over here to the output resolution and select your output. So we can actually change this native video that was generated inside of Hyper, which is only 720p, we can upscale it to a higher resolution. And so in this instance, I'm going to make sure that our Proteus model is selected. It's the best default model inside of Topaz video. And then you can go to export as. So I have an example of what that looks like. Here it is. And so when I play it back here, you can see that uh, the overall visuals look more realistic. Now, is it perfect? Of course not. These are early prototypes of what AI VFX are like. But generally speaking, I think that we are on the cusp of a fundamental shift in the way we add visual effects to our film projects. Now, I would say that this is only ready for online experimental projects and short films, but pretty soon we will be using tools like these on the big screen in conjunction with other traditional VFX tools. And that brings us to our game of the week. For this week's game, I'm going to show you three generations that were created from this specific image, which of course is a mid-journey image. And I want you to tell me which one was created in Hyper, which one was created inside of Runway, and which one was created inside of Pika Labs. So let's get started. This is number one. Okay, pretty cool. That spaceship looks like he's kind of getting pulled apart there. This is number two. And okay, you know, we've prompted an explosion and it's kind of an explosion, a little bit more like a, a cheap fireworks display, but some of that is there. And this is number three. And you can see that we have the lasers coming off the end and the ship is kind of stretching. I wouldn't say that it's exploding, but you know, it's an interesting start, right? Let us know your guess in the comments of this video. We will randomly send the winner some merch from the unreleased Curious Refuge store. There was a lot of news this last week about the announcement of Claude 3. So Clot 3 is interesting because they're billing it as a more creative alternative to ChatGPT. And they've ran it through all these tests and they say that it is more creative. So I wanted to test that theory. And so I went to Claude, ChatGPT, and Google Gemini, and I asked them to create a film treatment for a film that is a unique take on a classic genre. And I wanted it to be for a film that had never existed before. So I want it to be original. So all three tools very quickly gave me a film treatment. So Claude gave us this idea for Memory Heist that's basically Blade Runner meets Inception in the genre of sci-fi noir. 
ChatGPT created this shadows over time idea. I thought it was really interesting because it also created a sci-fi noir film concept. This one is like Blade Runner meets time travel. I actually really thought it was interesting. And the final treatment comes from Google Gemini, which created this last librarian concept, which is post-apocalyptic drama with sci-fi elements. It's kind of like V for Vendetta meets Fahrenheit 451. Personally, I felt like it was the most original and interesting concept, but you can actually read the treatments below this video. We have a link to a Google Doc. So I took the treatments and copied and pasted them into a document, and I removed any parts that would explain which tool it was actually created in. Then I took that document and uploaded it to ChatGPT, Claude, and Google Gemini, and I asked the tools to tell me which treatment it thought was more creative. And that's where the fun starts, because whenever I uploaded the document to Claude, it told me that it preferred ChatGPT's treatment because it felt like it was more creative. ChatGPT preferred Google Gemini, and Google preferred ChatGPT. So ChatGPT is at least the AI's winners for the most creative project, followed by Google Gemini. And I personally felt like Google Gemini was a little bit more creative, but I would love to hear what you think below in the comments because you can actually read the document. I put it below and you can see which tool created which treatment. I thought this was a really funny example of AIs competing with each other. Now, there's also one big update inside of Claude that makes it a huge deal for screenwriters. And that's the fact that it can now interpret up to 125,000 words worth of data. So you can upload entire scripts and it will synthesize that data and you can ask it questions about those scripts. I wanna show you how to do it. All you have to do is create a new chat inside of Claude, go to the paperclip icon and select your script. And now you can actually ask it questions about this script. This specific script is 116 pages long and it's a PDF. So the words aren't in that normal document format so the tool is going to have to scan the documents and convert it into text. So we can say, give me a synopsis of this script and click go. Now it does take a little bit of time because obviously you're inputting a large amount of data, but most of the generations that we've seen up to this point take less than 30 seconds. And it will begin generating a synopsis and the synopsis is exactly what this film is about. So I think that this is one of the most powerful features available inside of Claude, having the ability to upload a script and then be able to ask it questions about the characters, the scenes, is the prototype for the future of working on screenwriting projects. So if you're a professional screenwriter, having access to Claude, I think is your best tool and option at this point when it comes to uploading entire scripts. And while we're talking about OpenAI and ChatGPT, I have to note that Elon is actually suing OpenAI because he says that they are no longer on a mission uh, to be a nonprofit to benefit humanity, but they're making it about money because of investments with uh, Microsoft that are going towards their operations. So legally speaking, and I think that this is kind of the biggest news story that came from this that's kind of flying under the radar, Elon is suing to legally define ChatGPT4 as AGI. And so therefore it's outside of the, the license that Microsoft paid money for. And you know, it should be sent into the world and regulated and all of that stuff. But what I find really interesting is Elon is saying that we've already achieved AGI with ChatGPT4. Now, I don't know if too many people would agree with that statement, but at least in terms of the law, that's what he's pushing for. So We'll see if anything comes from that. Now I should note that Riley Brown over on X put together a music video that is called Please Don't Sue Me Elon featuring Sam Altman. Let's take a quick listen. Please don't sue me, Elon. I just did what I had to do. <laughs> that is so dumb. <laughs> In other AI news, Madonna actually used AI-generated concert visuals on her tour recently with the help of artist Sasha Kasauha. The visuals are actually really impressive, and we've seen other artists like Aesop Rocky, 
Kanye and Slash using AI visuals in their concerts and visual performances. So I'm sure we're going to see more AI generated visuals at music events. There's a new feature with layer diffusion, which is only available with automatic 1111 at this point, but basically it allows you to generate imagery with transparent backgrounds. So you don't have to generate an image and then remove the transparent background. You actually have the ability to generate it natively with transparency. And the reason why that's important is sometimes you have visuals, like in their example here, we have a bottle you want to have layers of transparency to that bottle. If you're looking through the glass, you still want some of the distortion and the, the reflections of the glass over the background. You don't want it to be a solid bottle. And so this tool allows you to do that. Now, I do want to show you how you can easily remove backgrounds using AI and some of the other larger tools out there. So if you actually go over here to Photoshop, there's a link below this video to download this asset. If you want to remove a background, it's crazy easy. All you have to do is import your object and hit remove background. And within just a few seconds, it removes the background. Now, I should note that it is kind of a solid removal here. So there's not kind of layers to that transparency. So the bottle backing here is still solid, but it is a very quick and easy way to remove a background. The same is true in Canva here. We have this picture of this Sherlock dog. We can just select him and go to background remover. And in just a few seconds, it removes the background. So there's a lot of AI tools that can help you with automating some of these tasks. Again, if you're really working on a professional project, you may want to use Photoshop because you can go in and finesse a little further. But if you're in a pinch and need a quick background removed, you can of course use Canva. I'm also crazy excited to announce that we will be premiering another, an AI short film created by Dave Clark on our channel on Monday, March 11th at 11 a.m. Pacific time. The film is one of the best examples of mixing AI content with live action footage, and we're calling it Live Gen. So it's a mixture of these two mediums and probably one of the very best AI films that I have ever seen. So be sure to go to that video, hit the bell, get notified. We're going to do a watch party and a premiere whenever it goes live. We'll see you on Monday. And while I'm talking about Dave, I want to congratulate everyone who is joining him inside of our AI filmmaking course here at Curious Refuge. We've already seen some incredible work from the community inside of that program. And I'd also like to say congratulations to everyone who made it inside of AI Filmmaking this session. This is our biggest session ever, and we are thrilled to be training VFX supervisors, people in the industry, and everyday folks looking to gain a new creative skill. Best of luck on your projects, guys. I can't wait to see what you create. If you've ever worked on an AI project, you know the process of lip syncing can be pretty dang tricky. And that's why innovations like the new lip sync feature inside of Pika Labs is so important. But there's actually a new alternative that is much cheaper and the results in many cases are sometimes better than Pika Labs. I want to show you how to use it. So it's created by the people that have created Wave to Lip and it's called Sync Labs. You'll find a link below this video. It's crazy easy to use. So they have a free version, but they're gonna put a watermark on it. The paid version starts at $20 a month, which will give you more generations than you will likely need. So I have this footage here of this character in a film, and basically you can see he's standing there, but he's not saying anything, and I want him to say words. This is from a project we actually released about six months ago. So all you have to do is drag and drop the video footage inside of the tool here, and then all you have to do is drag and drop the audio. So I have some quick audio here. I need the artifact. You get the idea. The entire scene is laid out with that audio. I'll drag and drop it into the audio section. And we can click on this menu here. And inside of this menu, you have three options. You have wave to lip plus plus plus. That is basically wave to lip. There's a few little iterations, but more or less that's traditional wave to lip. You also have this sync 1.5. That is a better quality lip generation. And then you have the 1.5.1 that gives you even better quality. So in most instances, if you're subscribed, clicking on the beta version will probably give you the best results and we'll go ahead and click generate. 
So let's take a look at the result here. You can see that wide shot, the lips are a little off, but the close up looks much better. There's kind of some movement around the face beyond just the lips as well. It looks pretty good. I think especially when it's paired with the blinks, it, it looks much more realistic. Now I have to compare this to our old version where we basically took wave to lip and then we up it inside of Topaz video using the iris model, which is specifically designed for faces. And this is the result that we got. So you can see there's much more fidelity on the face and the movements seem much more realistic. Now, is this method perfect? Absolutely not. But whenever you side by side, compare and contrast the lip sync inside of Sync Labs, with the old version using Wave Tulip and Topaz Video. Topaz Video seems like it might just be a little bit better. Someone on X also put together a quick little demo of using Pika Labs lip syncing tool with the Sora footage of the alien walking around the city. And this was the result. My steps are caught in the while trying to blend in In the city on a journey I can't comprehend I'm from a Okay, it's not bad as a quick tech demo. And that brings us to our AI Films of the Week. I want to kick things off by highlighting this project that was created by at This Is A Rabbit Hole and at Blair Vermet, who basically put together a crime drama that was about a ketchup disaster gone wrong. And I'm actually a little surprised because some of the ketchup stains look like blood. And I'm like, did the AI generators know that this was ketchup? Because most of the time they completely restrict that. So it's a, it's a really funny project and I highly recommend checking it out. The next AI project I want to show you is an AI music video created by Dustin Hollywood for Lit Reezy. It has some really cool visuals and some really good editing concepts. So you can tell that Dustin was really falling back on some core editing skills that he brought to the table with this project. And finally, I want to leave you with a really weird AI film that we came across. It's called How to Make a Fine Dining Dish. It's basically a really cursed cooking show where they show you how they put together certain projects. It feels like high art, and some of the visuals are just the weirdest thing that you've ever seen. <laughs> so I'm getting some serious, nice anti vibes from this, and uh, I highly recommend checking it out. But you've been warned, it's super weird. Thank you so much for watching this week's episode of AI Film News. I should note that we have an announcement about our NAB party coming next week. But if you haven't bought flights to go to NAB, now's the time to do it. We'll be hosting a party on April 15th. I can't say anything else, it's just going to be amazing, so you'll want to be there. Of course, if you want to get AI film news sent directly to your inbox, you can subscribe over on CuriousRefuge.com, and of course, you could subscribe here on YouTube to get the latest tutorials and news right here on the platform. Thank you so much for being an awesome member of the AI filmmaking community. We'll see you in the next one.